Hey everybody, Harland Williams here. Welcome to another episode of the Harland Highway Podcast. Got a little bit of a preamble I've got to do for you here. Um, got to be honest, I'm still new at the podcast thing here with the videos and the cameras and the walls and the ceilings and the desks and so on. And um, at this point in time, I'm doing everything myself. I'm filming I'm editing, I'm doing the sound, I'm, I'm doing all of it. I'm hoping I get to a place where I can build it up and I have a crew and I have a team and we can all work together. And But right now in its infancy, I'm kind of handling all aspects of the podcast. And uh, in doing so, I've managed to make a few technical errors along the way. And there's been a couple of episodes that I've actually shot and I've had to dump because I forgot to turn on the sound or I forgot to turn on a camera. And it's killing me, but it's part of the growing process. I'm learning. But there's one guest in particular where it's happened twice. And he's the guest on today's show, and his name's David Keckner. You know him from uh, the movies Anchorman. He's the, the guy with the cowboy hat, and you know him from The Office. He plays Finchie. You know him from a million movies and TV shows from Saturday Night Live. He's one of the funniest guys I've ever met in my life, and I'm not even kidding. He, he's just unbelievably hilarious. So here's... The backstory, the first time he came and did the podcast about two months ago, it said his camera was recording, but when I went to download it, there was no footage of him. We had this amazing podcast, we had this great conversation, and it didn't film him. I'm like, dude. And I told him, and he was so gracious, he has such a great sense of humor, he goes, when do you want me back, we'll do it again. So, bingo. Get him back up here a few weeks ago. I check all the cameras. I check everything before he gets here. We turn everything on. It says his camera's filming. I go to dump it into the computer and edit it. And the camera worked, but the little chip that takes in all the data and stores it, somehow it crapped the bed, and I got no footage of the amazing David Keckner. And I was heartbroken and I was afraid to call him and tell him, but I did. And I said, David, the podcast went so great. We had such an amazing time. We had so many laughs and told so many great stories. And, and I thought, we can't throw it away. I said, how about this? The sound worked. My camera worked. Yours didn't. Why don't we air the podcast I'll insert a picture of you every so often so they can know, remember what you look like, like they won't anyhow. And I just feel like we can't waste it because it was so much fun. And he said, yeah, man, let's do it. And so on this podcast with David Keckner, all you're going to see is me, and I'm going to put in little pictures of David along the way, and you're going to hear him. His sound is perfect, and I hope that's enough for you. I hope it works. And I promise, and David promises, he's going to come back and we're going to try for a third time. And this is becoming a running joke. And I'm going to have a guy standing here with one of these if I have to, to get the damn picture of David Keckner. So there you go, folks. That's my little, uh, my little disclosure before you watch this episode. But I think you're going to love this episode because a lot of this episode focuses on a lot of Hollywood stories. David and I met on a movie that starred Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman. And we talked about all the crazy stories about being on set with two of the biggest actors in the world, biggest directors in the world, biggest writers in the world. This movie had everyone on it. And here was David and I meeting for the first time and then we're going to talk about our worst auditions. We're going to be talking about a lot of really fun uh, behind-the-scenes Hollywood stories that I think you'll really, really enjoy. And you'll see why I didn't want to burn this episode and put it up regardless. And at least you get to look at me. I mean, I'm no uh, Raquel Welch. I'm no Farrah Fawcett, but I'm really close. Like, I'm I'm this far away from being one of the Jenner girls or whatever they are, the the. Kardashian girls. I'm, I'm that, I'm that, yeah. 
So I hope you enjoy it. Hang in there. I think you'll you'll enjoy. It'll be worth listening to and watching. David's amazing, and we shared. We had such a good time. I think you'll you'll feel it and see it. So here we go. Let's start the Harland Highway. And and before we do, please, I want to thank everybody who's just joined the podcast. The subscribe uh, subscribe button just keeps climbing. The views just keep climbing. We're going to. We're going in such a great direction, and then I step in and do this, mess it all up, but it's all part of the learning curve for me, and I'm glad you guys are on the journey with me, and um, I want to thank you so much, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe right now to the Harland Highway Podcast. Tell your friends to get on here. Leave some comments. I read all your comments, and uh, I can't thank you enough, so uh, here we go. Me, David Keckner, and uh, some really cool Hollywood stories right here on the Harland Highway podcast. Let's do it. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. You all set, guy? I'm set. Here we go. Oh, yeah, here we go. Hi, welcome to my podcast. Hold on, I got to do it. You know, you know. thanks for being here. This was episode 17. Good night. Ass what? Ass. You know what? What? I'm already sweating because you make me nervous. Good. Good. Well, I'm more nervous than you are because I feel like this is a big chance for me. This is a big chance. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the Harland Highway podcast right here. And a very special guest today, David, won't say the middle name, Keckner. It's Michael. You didn't know that? I thought it was Zachary. Uh Uh-uh. Never has been. What's your middle name? Uh, My show, uh, Zachary. (laughs) I'm David Zachary Uh Keckner. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do I spell the C-K or C-H? You tell me. It's your middle name, guy. Zachary. Zachary. Zachary Didgeridoo. The the Amish style. Yes. Have you? Yeah. Well, I was going to mention Charlie's here, my son. Where? You know, if, you, if your eyes work, he's right there. Um. Okay. Whatever, <laughs> guy. Is your daughter here too? Space <laughs> Ace. No. How but about cousin uh, Zachariah? Is he here too? We just went to my uh, to Missouri for a family reunion. Okay, with all the the whole family, the whole, all the kids. You have like six, right? I have five. Five. My show six. <laughs> I did take my girlfriend, so yeah, we had six. Um, the, so the wife, the girlfriend, and the six the kids. Not the wife. I'm no longer married. Okay, okay. okay. So it was a partial family get-together. Well, no, it was the family, the real family. Um, went to take the, I took them through my hometown of Tipton, which is 2,000 people. Oh, wow. 3,500 now because they moved the city limits to include the prison. I shit you not. What? Yeah. They, they redefined the, the, the boundaries the to town. include the prison. Yes. We don't have enough rapists, murderers, and pedophiles here in Tipton. Right. So let's uh, let's so do some cute. lot readjustments and get a good, healthy portion of uh, the devil's minions. <laughs> do you know what? The, why they do it? Federal For dollars. For black masses. Federal dollars are allocated on headcount. So what if they include the prison, which is fifteen hundred people, they get more money for the town. Why didn't you just have John Wayne Gacy buy a place in town? Well, he's got several. Well, there should be enough heads in his basement. Hello, Dr. Carrot. Actually, puts him in the crawl. Oh, wow. The crawl. The crawl space. Uh, You didn't need to say space. I knew what you meant. I don't know how smart your viewers are. Well, you knew. That's true. I think you... It's not plural. It's my viewer. I watched these later, and that's about it. You don't even post this. I don't even post it. You don't it. upload this it to a, for me. a platform. No, no, no need. No, really but no. when you said, see, here's when you said, because I'm, I'm good at words. I yeah. took English at, at DeVry and all that. You know I that. I you say gay English, but go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's DeVry. That's the, we put a silent G on English. A lot of people don't know that DeVry is a tech institute, but go on. <laughs> right, yeah. So you took English at DeVry Tech? Well, shop English. Sure, mechanics. Sure. sure. Yeah, Metalwork English slash. I'm, I'm tracking. You know, uh, but the way you said uh, crawl, <laughs> like, 
I think I pretty much knew we were talking about a serial killer. The way you said, crawl. <laughs> think about how much work. Like, after you're done, you know, with whatever, and then cutting the person up, you have to bury them in the crawl. You're like, oh, fuck. I, did he cut them up? I thought he... I don't, I don't know if he cut them up. He I think he buried them whole. whole bodies. He liked a whole corpse to play with. And that's with. a lot of work. Because, I mean, you've got... Wait, how would you know, guy? Well, because you get... What? You know, I've been under a house before. Yeah, but now I'm wondering why. Are you really recording? <laughs> what are you... What happened to your gums? I'm thinking. I think you just ate a, a corpse. <laughs> that's my thinking look. Wow. Okay, Popeye. Jeez. That's Popeye. Wow. I'd make a good Popeye. Or a serial killer. <laughs> or a serial killer Popeye. Folks, since we haven't really started yet, here we are again. David Keckner is here. Mm-hmm. Actor, model, uh, uh, community service guy. Uh, used to be a school teacher, mechanic. Priest. A priest, a nun. And uh, also, you worked in a dildo factory, didn't you? Well, I was a tester, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's got to be a joke. Someone's a dildo tester, right? That's got to be has part to of be. A, a joke. I think you just look for the girl in town that walks sideways <laughs> like a crab, and I think you got her. Oh, she's a dildo yeah, tester. Yeah, there's Carol Ann, the dildo. She works down at the Donnie's Dildos down on uh, 4th Street. On <laughs> oh, 4th Donnie's, where they make the dildos. Yeah, she stands sideways to cross town. There is a dildo factory. Where you know, is it? I, we know It has to exist. A dildo factory does exist, and someone has yeah. to actually... Uh, my God, how is this not a document? Maybe this will be our do- a documentary, yep. really. Yep, I mean, someone's got to be a dildo, like, yep, floppy enough, hard, whatever. Do you think they just do that? Don't they have to actually, doesn't someone have to test them? <sighs> Carol Ann. Carol does. Ann, the sidewalker. <laughs> wow. But guess what? She's always smiling. She's always smiling, and she gets free food at Crab Fest at Red Lobster every second month. Well, you know what? The irony, he never had crabs. You haven't? No, she hasn't. She hasn't, no, no. yeah. Yeah. Nor a real man. Yeah, she just had Tough. latex rubber. Yeah. Oh, That's all God. all she's ever known. Yeah. So anyways, this is the guy. This is uh, David Keckner. For the fourth time, he's made me introduce him. Uh, doesn't have ego issues. Uh, I'll probably introduce you again in about four or five minutes. Do people get pretty uptight about how, do people, have you had, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not, someone who said, hey, I need you to list this and this and this as my credit and introduce me this way? No. No, okay. Because your friends wouldn't be that way. And if they were, I think there'd be a a problem. Yeah. I think I'd probably um, get them canceled. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably write up a false police report. And I'd probably blow a rape whistle. <laughs> We've got one hanging around your neck. I got one. Yeah, I'm not do. telling you where it is, yeah. but I got one, <laughs> guy. So, so tell everyone how you, you know David from the office, from uh, from Anchorman, from uh, Corumpus, my fave. Krampus is you. You have seen Krampus. I went to Krampus, dude. Yeah. I sent you texts for okay. two years, going, "Where can I get the Krampus China set? <laughs> I just bought seats for the theater version of Krampus. Are you going to be in it? Where can my family get the Krampus sleeping bag set? And you, you barely ever answer. I always you are answer. very angry. I always answer. I know. I look forward to your texts. You but, know this. But I teased you a lot about Krampus, but it. you were great in it. To it's see a, to see you fighting with a gingerbread man is something I dream about that sometimes. People, do you? Yeah, I dream that you riding a horse across Pepperidge Farm. Mm-hmm. You dismount. Right. You've got a giant yeast infection. <laughs> How can you tell? Well, Do I we announce were, it in the dialogue? Because I thought you get off the horse, but you're still riding something, and it's a like, ball of <laughs> yeast. <laughs> yeah. So my acting in your dream, my acting is so good. You're like, oh my god, I can tell. He has a yeast infection by the way he's acting. That's not how I would put it. I would put it, your acting is so good, this guy had to have gone to DeVry. Uh, what was that? <laughs> or, was that, a, we, we that was a chortle. Sound like you just inhaled Winnie the Pooh's last popcorn fart. <laughs> Jesus. 
God. I didn't know one of them was fond of popcorn, but thanks for clearing that up for your viewers. Yeah, honey dipped popcorn. Listeners. Who's your favorite <laughs> nice, uh, character from the Hundred Acre Woods since <laughs> we're on it? Ah, uh, it has to be Tigger. Oh, yeah. The wonderful thing about Tiggers. A Tigger's a wonderful thing. Yeah. They're bouncy, pouncy, pouncy, pouncy. <laughs> you ever done that when you've orgasmed? And I know your <laughs> son is here somewhere. But have you ever, like, at when just when you're achieving, you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Have, I think you have. I have not. Because I've heard it. But I tell you what, I, the next time I do, alone or otherwise, I will do that. You're going to do the Tigger. And then I'm going to whisper in that girl's ear, that's for Harland. So it's a girl this time. <laughs> this time. Deep <laughs> in the hundred <laughs> acre wood, wood, his Tigger's getting off behind a tree. A lot of people don't know Tigger, also oh. dildo tester. Yeah, he looks like yeah. it. The way he, he right? jumps up <laughs> and down. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, yeah, he probably gets the biggest he, ones. He piles it right on. Wow. In. Now, Harlan, can we tell the people? Oh, here we go. You want to? I'm yeah. going to tell them. Why am I here? I was just here. <laughs> Are we going to? Uh-huh. Can we tell them at the end? Okay. Yes. Because if we tell them now, they're okay. all going to oh, be okay. looking okay. and going, wait, is that thing? Okay. Gotcha. You know gotcha. what I'm yes, talking yes, about. We'll yes, te- yes. I think we tell them at the yes. end and just like, you guys have been slammed. Wait, what was that? Well, that's like, you got, they no, would. I know what that is. That, that's you're putting yourself deep inside someone's. Thing. Tiggers. <laughs> By the way, you sent me noodling, and I have to admit, I have not read it yet, and I have to do that. I was reminded on the way up oh, here, yeah. like, shit, I've got to read no noodling. No worry, there's no because rush. this also reminded me of noodling. Oh, right. And again, we were just in Missouri, yeah. and near the Bagnell Dam of the Lake of the Ozarks, and we went to a different lake further south of there, oh, but yeah. there they do a lot of noodling near the Bagnell Dam because the catfish hang out. In those deep waters there. Yeah, noodling is the only form of fishing, unless you're like trying to kill yourself with a shark. Noodling is where these guys go along the riverbanks and they shove their arm into cat. The catfish hide in big holes. They dig into the side of the bank. And the catfish, these things are like 60, 80 pounds. They swim out and engulf the arm up to here. And then these guys pull the fish out on their arm and get these giant cats it's called new it's only it's only legal i think in 12 states oh is it right yeah but they the the, the fish bites cuz they they think it's another fish they're eating right no they th- i actually did surveys on this it's it's their the mothers are protecting the young ones in these these little caverns oh, so they're so, fighting off a predator yeah so oh. they just come at it yeah wow isn't that wild yeah anyway you've written a script Noodling, yeah. Two scripts, one for the movie, one for the series. Yeah, we're gonna do both. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You know, we're gonna make noodling happen. Right? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. But I, you know, have you ever eaten catfish? Oh yeah. Cause, see, because I don't know that I want to eat a fish that's been fisted down the throat. <laughs> I don't know if that will affect the taste. It's very bony though, catfish. All, 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 all fish are. But I mean, really? My memory of eating catfish is you're pulling out bones the whole. Because I, okay, I lied. I do eat catfish. It's one of my favorites. Okay. And I never get bones. The fillets are well, delectable. Here in L.A., they fillet a little bit better than they do in Missouri, I guess. That's the last place I ate catfish was probably Missouri. But Dallas. how many years ago before, Whew. yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be oof, 40 years ago. So wow. before knives were really perfected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most, so. it was, you're right. It was a stone. It was yeah. a, it was a. It was a, a sharpened stone uh, piece, yeah. a stone stone tool. So yeah, tool, tool, crawl, crawl, tool. <laughs> and they would they would fillet them into the crawl. Oh God! Creeps they throw them. fish heads down there just to uh, to ward off the stench. Where from the crawl? Oh, they throw the fish heads down in the What's crawl. No, I put my fish heads yeah. down there. Don't go down there. Ding fish dong, heads. The witch is dead. Right. Um, tell everyone where we met, though, guy. This is going to be a treat so for no, folks. So, the, no, the first time was on that movie set, correct? Yeah, okay. what movie? Right. Tell the gang. Wag the dog. Wag the dog. So, we meet on Wag the dog. Put up movie poster here. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so, I get there that morning. Were you nervous that day? It was my first movie. It was your first movie? I yeah. didn't know that. I had done SNL the year before. Yeah. It was my first movie. I didn't know that. Yeah, and I was so happy I got cast. Okay, let um, me set it yeah. up. We walk on to set. This movie, Wag the Dog, we, we walk on set, 
And Robert De Niro's there, Dustin Hoffman, Kristen Dunst, David Mamet, uh, Barry Levinson. Barry Levinson's directing. Yeah, and yeah. this guy, just to establish, sometimes actors like to establish their territory. They like to, you know, turf out. This guy goes up and roundhouses De Niro right in the throat. Just <laughs> cruise line him. <laughs> this guy, De Niro's like, okay, well, how, how are you okay, doing there, middle. David? And he just... I did say hi to Robert De Niro that morning. You did? I was, I was so nervous. I said, hi, I'm David. He goes, I'm Bob. And he kept walking. He didn't shake your hand? Oh, no, no. Did you put your hand out? I don't think so. Oh, thank I God. It was be, I thought it was going to be, hi, I'm presentational. Yeah. I'm David. We're going to have a three-minute you know, three conversation yeah. probably in my head. Yeah. I'm Bob. I'm like, oh, he doesn't want to be bothered. Then I'm thinking, like, he's really into character. In yeah. Head, right? Thank God you didn't put nervous. your hand out. So anyway... We're, we're shooting in a studio in L.A., Wag the Dog. Um, it's, a, it's a political satire written, yeah. by, written by David Mamet. And I'm thinking because it's David Mamet. Yeah. Everyone's going to be like on commas, on periods. Like yeah. with a Mamet script, you do the, you do his words, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's about that. You don't just go, go off on it. Yeah. And you are a dog trainer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I am a commercial director who's been brought in to shoot a fake scene from a war because they want to get our uh, get the country to go to war, but they have to show some reason. Like yeah, some they, kids they, they fabricated a war. Exactly, that's a shorter sentence. And that's, it was helped. It was to he try did go and to un unseat a president, right, or I something think like so. that. Yeah. yeah. So then you and I—that's the first time we meet. I, I was like, oh, thank God, this guy. You're a comic. You're fucking funny. Yeah. But I remember you fucking made me laugh so hard right away. What'd I do? You said, you said lapsa apso the way you said it. Remember how you said it? Lapsa he goes, apso. He goes, what kind of dog is that? Lapsa apso. Oh, you're like, oh, this one hurts a lapsa apso. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't ever be this funny. Um, <laughs> what? But that's what it was, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I say it wrong? No, no, you said it right. Oh, it's just the way I said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of the way you enunciate, crawl. Yes, I did. Exactly. It's a lapse absolute. Yeah. Yeah. So how wild is that? Yeah. It's your first movie. It's probably maybe my fourth or fifth movie. Was, yeah. And, but walking on set, me and you, we were definitely the guys with the, the you know, we probably had equal roles that yeah. were four or five pages each or something. We walk onto the set with De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, Kristen Dunst, all these A list, triple A list players. Yeah. It was a, it was pretty intimidating. I was nervous. I was kind of glad you were there too because it was like I was like, oh, here's a funny guy. It's probably the same vibe you had. Like, I don't have to worry about right. like an A list Oscar yeah. winning. These are Oscar winning guys. Well, I think you and I spoke a little bit before the scene started. Yeah, and we're joking around. We said howdy. Yeah, right. And I think you had seen me on SNL the year before. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I yeah, loved yeah. it, yeah. You knew all the kids in the hall guys and all that stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 And so, um, so we had some mutual friends. So we were kind of palling around a little bit. Yeah. So that made me feel a level of comfort. But then the casting director who cast me was there. And I was like, <sighs> oh, in no. my head, being nervous, like, I have to do a good job for her so she'll cast me again. You know, all that shit yeah, goes you, through your head. You, th you think one movie leads to another, yeah. but often it's... Plus, the role was so inconsequential. Like, no one's going to go, who played the director yeah. guy? Yeah, same with me. Yeah. yeah. It's like, so what? But to, to be there, yeah. like, I was in Vegas when this movie came up. I was doing stand-up in Vegas. And my, my agent at the time... Um, called me or emailed me or something and said, hey, they want you to be in this movie. I didn't even, I love it when I don't have to audition, right, when right. they just want me. I'm yeah. like, so they, they want you to be, and at this point, my movie career was just starting, like I was starting to get lead roles and co-starring, like good stuff. And they go, yeah, they want me to be in this movie. We're, we're FedExing you the script. So I get it. And it's like, I'm on five pages. Right. And I, I write them back. I guess I was a little bit snooty, but of I was course. doing bigger roles. So right. I said, I said, no, I'm not doing a movie with five five pages. And he goes, it's with De Niro, Hoffman, Mamet, all you know, all these. And I said, what time do you want me there? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. It was wild. I think mine was the same thing where I don't think I auditioned. It was like they were they were putting comic actors in a bunch of different roles like that. Yeah. And it was like, wow, you got this thing. Of course, then you start thinking that in my head, that's how Hollywood works. They just start giving you things. Yeah, right. I think I had like 15 lines or something yeah. like that total. Of course, I counted them. Really? I you remember, know I had 14, right? <laughs> 
I remember the first the first take was it was a steady cam shot. So they go steady. Into, yeah, a steady. Or shakes. shakes. They go into you and Dustin Hoffman asking what kind of dog that is. Then they pull out and they go for this this walk with a steady cam. Yeah. And I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And so also Dustin Hoffman's son was in the picture. He put him in there oh. as his assistant or something like that because he was a movie producer. And I remember he was right there and I didn't know I was supposed to walk along with them to stay in the shot. And also, Dustin Hoffman jumped three of my lines. Oh, come on. And I didn't know what to do. Yeah, but I he, have a similar story. I'll tell you. Okay. After yours. Yeah, but it jumped three of my lines. Yeah. Of course, I'm going, wait a minute. Now I'm down to ten lines. Hold on, motherfucker. Whoa. <laughs> and you can't say anything because it's, it's Tootsie. Like, it's that's freaking me. Tootsie. Um, yeah, I uh, yeah. Had a, you missed you jumped me a yeah. little bit, bro. Yeah, hey Dusty, <laughs> roll it back, <laughs> Nacho. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay, you talk, then I talk. Yeah, <laughs> then you talk, then I talk. What you did was you talk, and then you went out, walked away. Uh-uh, yeah, bro. Uh, no, and ain't uh, the way she goes. Easy. Yeah, this is an Oscar night, Oscar <laughs> winner. Easy Tootsie. Easy Tootsie. Roll up the dress. <laughs> How about Cleveland? Remember that line? Remember fake titties, baby. Yeah. Listen, hon. Get lost, uh, mascara, so I was, Mike. Because I didn't know what a steady cam shot was. Whoa, yeah, I, I probably didn't either. And so I didn't know I was supposed to trail. I think someone kind of told me. You know, because it wasn't like the first AD. Normally a first AD will kind of tell you, we're doing this, then this, and this. Yeah. And this. That wasn't happening. I think because no. everybody was pretty stressed out because there was such star power going on. Well, and don't forget, let me set it up. So the, the whole stuff we shot... Was on it was the it was a sound stage, right. but the the scene was on a sound stage. Right. So you were you were directing everything, and then I was one of the animal wranglers. So everyone was together. So it was you there, Dustin Hoffman there, me there with Dustin, De Niro here, Kristen Dunst. We were all for the whole shoot. We were there two three days, I think. Yeah. And so you at least said hello to De Niro. <laughs> I was of the. I've always been of the mindset. You know, whenever someone's a big, a big player, uh-huh. I'm like, you know what? If they want to talk to me, they can talk. I'm. I don't want to. I don't want to do anything. Yeah. So my scenes, all my dialogue was right here with Dustin. That that made me happy. I was actually yeah. acting with Dustin Hoffman, and I'll tell you the story I had with him. But so De Niro was standing uh, probably about eight feet away for for our the whole time. And day one, didn't, didn't even say a word to him. He didn't say a word to me. And I, I was like, that's cool. He's the big, biggest actor in the world. Yeah. And then day two, there was a moment where, where still hadn't said anything. And I was on my mark waiting for Dustin to come over. And I look over, and De Niro just did one of these. He went, you know, he did the nod at yeah. me. And I just went right back. And, and that was it. We never talked. <laughs> And I could have been happier. It was almost cooler that we never said a word. Yeah. Um, So, anyways, same thing with Dustin, right? So, I have my scene with Dustin, and we had we had we had quite a bit of dialogue, and and uh, we did it once. Levinson goes action, and and then um, and then we do it again, and Dustin goes to me, and I can't do his voice. You know, I don't. I didn't go to DeVry for impressions. Live for English. And cut. (laughs) Is the podcast over now? Because I it is, but let's keep talking okay. off the air just so I can finish the story. Uh, but so then we go to do the scene again, and Dusty before we do it, Dusty goes, "Okay, this time uh, why don't we do this, this, and I'll say this, you say that, I'll do this, and then we'll do that." And I'm just sitting there going, "Okay, yeah, okay, Mister Hoffman, yeah." And so we they yell action. We do the scene. We go through all the dialogue. They yell, cut, and Dustin just looks at me and goes, you, you didn't do one thing I asked you to do. And I looked at him and I said, Mr. Hoffman, I'll be totally honest. I'm so in awe that I'm here acting with you. I didn't hear a word you said. <laughs> and that's for real. And he just looks at me and he goes, okay, do it this time. And that was it. It was just like. Did you do it the next time? I don't think I did. <coughs> I was so I was so discombobulated. Like to be, the, like it was. It was like, you came from a small town. Yeah. I came from, when, whenever you're from Canada, it feels like a small town. Right. So here's this kid from the suburbs of Toronto. I grew up watching this guy, Kramer versus Kramer, Tootsie, all the, and now I'm acting with Dustin Hoffman. Right. It just, 
doesn't it, make sense. It frazzled my mind. No, you're there and yeah. your heart's jumping out of your throat. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. And and because it was I was sort of new in the movie yeah. scene too, I was I was just like We say the movie game, but go ahead. The what now, the, hey? The movie game. Who, how, it's what now? The movie game. But okay. Uh no thanks. I'm busy for the rest of my life. I got a five line part for you. Uh what time? I'm back. <laughs> uh but here's the other part. You know, he didn't have the right to tell you how to do the scene. That's the director's job. I know. Like it's not like Barry Levinson. Who's Barry yeah. Levinson? Yeah, right. It's not like this is a first time director yeah. that Dustin Hoffman can run over. Yeah. You know, go, I'm gonna tell this kid, here's how we're gonna do it. Yeah. Like, it's Barry fucking Levinson. Okay. So maybe you ask Barry Levinson how he wants it yeah. done. And then we do it that way. Because David Mamet wrote the fucking script. Yeah. Are we not gonna do it the way David Because yeah, yeah. we didn't do it the way David Mamet wrote the fucking script. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I was really confused. And a little disheartened, like, huh? And then, you know, it all pushed past so fast. I was like, Argh. You know what? Now that you mention it, like you're bringing back all the memories, I do remember being a little, like, even though I was the underling, sure. I do remember, because, you know, I'd done stand, I'd done a lot of stuff. Right. I hadn't done something at that magnitude, but I also, in my head, I go, geez, this is a little bit pushy. Right? This is like, you. who are you to be telling me? It's funny, I remember that now. Yeah, I know you're a big actor. Great. Yeah. But there is protocol here. Yeah. The director's the guy yeah. that tells me if we're changing shit up. Yeah. Not you. And plus, I can't... Like, he didn't just go, okay, this time when we do it, when I say yellow, you say green. Right. He was like... He, he, like, pretty much rewrote the whole scene on the fly, and I'm just like, wait, that's like 40 different things, right. Tootsie. Yeah. <laughs> like, tighten your yeah. girdle, adjust your bra, and go take a tampon break. <laughs> Tootsie wanted to talk more. Damn. Yeah. I had another scene with them later in the editing booth. Yeah. Editing the footage we shot, right? Yeah. And uh, I'd never seen this since. Them spend, I kept going back. I got three weeks of work out of it because it took them so long to shoot that scene. Oh, cool. Because the DP was was cutting, break. I've never seen this since, breaking up mirrors and placing them on this black tape to get the right reflection he wanted. Oh, God. He's won Oscars, this guy, the, the DP. But I remember just like, what the... Was he the DP or the lighting guy? The DP. Who is the lighting guy? But pushing, you know, literally breaking up mirror, right? Yeah. Putting in uh, that, you know, the gobby black tape they use. Yeah. And just to get like this different reflection, I've never seen it since. And I know this much, it wasn't fucking necessary, but I know it took forever. And then I was... Can I But can I just yeah. interject and to tell you how yeah. I do that as a DP? Okay. <laughs> Please do. Uh, Two words, hang disco ball. <laughs> That's it, baby. You hang the disco ball, you either spin it or you don't. <laughs> anyway, I remember this. So we're in an editing bay, right? So we're supposed to be watching monitors. Can you just say that again? Editing I, bay? Or no, this. Either, I'll, I'll, go this ahead. Uh, you hang a disco ball. I either spin it or you don't in the crawl. Wow. So I remember we're sitting there, and then he keeps taking all this time. Dustin Hoffman's here. Yeah. Um, Bob De Niro. Bob. Robert De Niro's yeah. on the other side of him. Can you just say Robert? Because he did brush past you. Robert. I don't think you've earned the Bob oh, thing. I know what went. Robert De Niro. This yeah, other when, when actor, a guy just whisks by you, when I'm you Bob. say, it, it, you, don't, you don't get to say Bob. Okay. Can you Robert, just stop? Mr. Can De Niro. Can you please? Thank you. So De Niro is God. there. There's another Cocky actor little thing, aren't you? Between De Niro and Hoffman. <laughs> Then it's Hoffman, then it's me. And I remember I'm looking like this, like I'm watching the uh, editing cut, right? Your hands are like that? Yeah. Like because to me, that looks like you're lining up for a new headshot. <laughs> like one of those <laughs> real horrible ones, like... Can I grab some stills off this can, later? Can I act for you? Can I grab some stills off this later? No, thanks. I'm busy. Yeah, so, so then what like happened? You, like you'd be sitting there watching a monitor. Yeah. You might be resting your head. Yeah. And, but then I'm, I didn't realize I'm stuck there now. For all of the scene. Oh, I didn't God. realize that's my first movie, right? So yeah. I had to stay there. For continuity. For continuity yeah. the whole time. And the, the DP would never speak to me because the first day I asked him a question. I By said, the way, can you just, just stop being unselfish and tell the people what a DP is? Oh, it's so a director they, of photography. I it's, mean, guy, <laughs> these so, are lay people watching. Okay, these that, aren't stars like you. These are lay people. The, it's the person who's responsible for the look of the film. Right, and the short thing is the DP, director of photography. So oftentimes it's the director, 
Yeah. But oftentimes he'll be also be the lead cameraman. Sometimes he's not. The LC? Yeah. <laughs> but he's, he's the guy that lights it up. Right, he's the guy who decides where the lights go. All this shit. Okay, Jesus, what's what, what's this thing? What's the crucifix play? I don't think you can understand unless I widely. Well, you know, this isn't Marcel Marceau's even, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> this is mine. Your your camera can't even get my home in, in Normandy. I know, but I'll it's do it so like this for you and on your the viewers. Third like, day, he ideas. rose from the dead, and the right. God, okay, do keep, you believe? I do. Okay, Thomas. The train? Doubting Thomas. Oh, I thought you meant... You don't know do your you wonder, Bible. Do, well, Jesus used to watch Thomas the Train. <laughs> of course he did. He invented it. Do you know who Doubting Thomas is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought you, you understood... Wait. The, you understood the crawl space joke. Yeah. I said, okay, Thomas. Let's, you didn't get that Doubting one. Thomas. Oh, Jesus Christ. I hope you edit this out. Well... well let's uh, go, Charlie. I probably won't because this gives people a rare glimpse into your angry attitude. <laughs> so I'm leaving it all in so they can see the real Zachary. The real DP. So I forget who the DP's name is. Yeah. He's uh, like a famous guy and he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, won some, he's won some medal. So every element of that movie was like high level. Like oh, even yeah. the DP oh, was yeah. an Oscar winner. Everybody, everybody, I didn't even know that. Woody Harrelson's in it, remember? Oh yeah, and and, and uh, everyone uh, was in it. Yeah, yeah. Willie Nelson's in it. Oh God, yeah, man. So was his uh, were his teeth in it? Us. Yeah. Okay. So I, remember, I didn't realize Willie Nelson was yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. two movies I've done with Willie, and you've done two. Yeah, yeah. Because I did one of the Dukes of Hazard movies, and so did you. Yeah. And Willie was in both. Wait, there was another Dukes of Hazard movie. Oh, you're going to drop the DVD one on me. Huh? Okay, I sorry, I did it di straight to DVD. Uh, Dukes of Hazard 3, Dukes of Hazard 2 over here, going to run up on me and do a Rambo. <laughs> Just because you weren't flattened out and stuck in a DVD. You, you know, got a crap one, all over serious? Harlantown. Uh, no, is there, no, you're fucking around. I'm not fucking around. There's a Dukes, again, movie poster here. I'm going to no put shit. it up. And right. again, people are going to see your I attitude. Know, I didn't know that. People are going to see your ego yeah. higher than Mount St. Helens before she, she tiggered. When we do noodling, my name is above yours. Then. I know it is. It always okay. is. All right. And that's not easy for me, but guy, you're a friend. It's not about friendship. It's about well, it's about positioning. Yeah. And that's, that's sometimes that's hard on me. So I had said, I'd spoken to the DP earlier that week. Because I didn't know who to report to on the stage, right? Because it's yeah. the first time, and I said to, I asked him a question, a, a really innocent question, and he was so put off by it. He's like, "Over there, really?" He yeah, gave you two that I would deign to ask him a question about where I'm supposed to go. You would what? Deign to ask him a question. Be deign, so, yes. You know that you I was an it. English teacher at DeVry, and you're throwing Dane is a is a British. Royalty, like it's a, it's a lower position on the. De he deigned to. Okay. Look, he princed now, to talk to me. Now you put that up next to your crawl on your podcast. I think you're. I think Dane was a misstep, guy. I don't think so. I, I think you, if you used the wrong word. I don't think so. That's like me, me saying I went to the store and drove my lasagna when right. I should have said car. Friend of yours. I'm talking to your imaginary son. My son is here. Yeah, okay. Okay. So is mine. <clears throat> it's an intransitive verb to condescend reluctantly and with a strong sense to the affront to one's superiority that is involved. In fact, it, oh, was, hold on. The, could it was the perfect word. To if use. you could just hold your pink phone up a little higher. Yeah. Do you want to know why it's pink? We're off I topic. I think we know. I think we know. Two reasons. Woody Harrelson. Two reasons. Yeah. Number one, I can't see anymore. So if this is any other color, I'm like, where the fuck's my phone, right? That's why it's pink. And this one, I was at Target with my kids shopping, and this one was $17. And the other, only other ones that fit were 27, $27 or $32. I'm like, who cares? I'll get the pink one. And you would deign to interrupt me. Well... Just right there by saying who to cares came back to bite you. reluctantly and with a strong sense of the affront to one superiority that is involved. So that I did exactly use actually the right word. 
Again, putting me down, but again, putting no, me down in front of my I mean, fan base on no, my podcast. The not who co- said, "Oh, oh Kechner, you misstepped in front of your millions." And a of polite pod- guest that wasn't trying to crush me in front of my fan base would have said, "Yes, Harlan, that was <laughs> wow." Yes, Just, Father Williams. Wow. But you called me out. You said, "I think that's a misstep, guy." Guy, a, a gracious. <laughs> giving friend would have let it rolled but you pummeled me you pulled up the oxford king's dictionary and raped me <laughs> you i no i didn't because if i had attempted oh, see, to here we you go mentioned ahead. earlier you have a rape whistle on you and if you thought that was happening you would have pulled out your rape whistle and you would have blown it and so now you get me again so now we got carolina walking sideways down the street going whoo whoo no it's <laughs> <laughs> That's for Harlan. Okay. Okay. So, so here we he was go. upset that I had spoken to The him. DP. Right. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm stuck in that position, and a couple of things happen. Later, so he realized, I think what he thought that day was I was just an extra, and he didn't want to have to deal with an oh, extra. No. Then he realized, like, oh, he's in the movie. And the one on the on the next week that I came back, because they didn't get the scene shot, which was incredible. He was like, it, doesn't, it wasn't that big a scene. Yeah. He goes, uh... Yeah, just for future reference, you probably don't want to get stuck in a position like that, which I kind of appreciate. Like, yeah, that was nice. nice that was a hot tip. Yeah. So anyway, I'm so nervous. I still can't talk, nor just like have a conversation with Dustin Hoffman or De Niro. Yeah. And there's a guy between them that I still don't know who he is, but <laughs> he was having a, a nice conversation with Dustin Hoffman the whole time, like over the next week and a half or whatever it was we were there. Yeah. Over the three weeks. We were like... Work two days, one week, two days, another. So I got three weeks of full work. Wow. And I remember this. Jeez. They were getting along. And as they got along more, I got more and more into my head just going, oh, what can I say? Oh, I should say something. Don't say anything. Don't, oh, no, don't say that. You, yeah. know, you just start yeah. going in your You head. were figuring how you could get in into the club. <laughs> yes, but, and then Dustin's wow. going on to that movie that's about... um. Uh, you know, a virus or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. The pandemic yeah. would never happen. It wouldn't happen in real life. Yeah. That monkey thing. Yeah, yeah, where he had the, the yeah, hazmat helmet. suit on. And, and he told that guy, like, I'm going to get you a job. Outbreak. That. Outbreak, okay. Yeah, nice. which is also a teenage Post-day. acne oh. movie. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he gave this guy, he's like, getting this guy a job. And I'm like, oh, no. What the? F- I'm doing it all wrong. I'm wow. doing this thing wrong. Yeah. I spoke to the wrong guy. I don't know what all this glass is about down here. I said hi to Nero. He wouldn't say hello to me. The casting director will never speak. That's all going through the head, right? Uh, anyway. do, you, do you want to hear what really paid it off for me, though? <laughs> what? Because I, I was in the same boat. Like yeah. I, as I said, I wasn't going to talk to anyone. Yeah. Right. But by this time, I had done Dumb and Dumber and a okay. few other movies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. I think it was day three, Dustin and I w- did our scene, and he would just go back to his chair. He, yeah. he, he had a chair over right, right near where Barry Levinson was. Right. And, and, uh, and, and so in between, like, when we were Takes. waiting for action, yeah. we'd be standing literally closer than me and you are. Yeah. And there was no chit-chat. Right. He was just kind of looking at his script or doing something. He, he didn't make any effort to be sociable. And I was like, I get it. Right. I get it. I'm low on the chain here. And on day three, it was probably, I don't know, we'd probably been there like two hours. And you mentioned that his young son was there. Yeah. Yeah. His son was probably about, what, 15 or 16 I at the time? Yeah, something like, seemed like a teenager. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> I'm on my mark getting ready to do another scene with Hoffman. And I'm going over my script. I'm on my mark because, I, you know, I like to be right where I'm, I'm going to be acting so I can... In my head, I'm going, should I move this way? Should I look at that? You know, I want to know. I want to know what's there. Because their method, I'm going to be method. My method may be uh, with a hockey helmet on, but it's a method. He's from Canada anyway. So I'm standing there doing my thing, and I'm still feeling all this intimidation, right. and I'm feeling out of place, but I'm loving it too, because right. it's like, how lucky are we? We're in Hollywood. We're in Hollywood yeah. with the two biggest stars right. at the time. And so I'm standing there, and uh, kind of out of the corner of my eye, I look <laughs> up, and there's Hoffman over there now with this young boy and i didn't know it was his son and i'm standing there and i look over and they both go like that like almost like out of invasion of the body i was like ah! you know that scene and they're pointing at me and I'm, now i'm like oh no what did i do maybe he's pissed about the right. improv fuck up that right. i did right? right all of a sudden his son and him come 
rolling over a fast gait, yeah. not a leisurely walk. Fast gait for me. <laughs> okay. So something you didn't get. <laughs> this use of gait, but anyway. You got a blow I, by and I got. Like you do. Okay. Well, 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 so all right. Hoffman and Hoffman Jr. I don't even know what the kid's name was. <laughs> it's a junior. Just, let's call him Carl's Jr. He probably has a drive through growing out of the side of his face. <laughs> Like a, like a growth. You'd love to be a dildo tester, but go on. Yeah. So they come uh, flying over, and I'm standing going, oh, no, he's going to ream me for, for not doing the improv properly. He walks up to me with his son, and they're looking at But now hoffy has got this, like, kind of, like, starstruck look in his eyes. And I'm like, what the fuck? He goes, he goes, were you the cop and dumb and dumber that drank the pee? And I went, yeah. And they... Dude, this guy lit up. Oh, thank God. The sun lit up. From that moment, Hoffman wouldn't stop talking to me. When we were standing there, it was like we knew each other. I don't know. He must have loved me in that movie. Sure, who doesn't? And yeah. when, <clears throat> when the movie was over, when I was wrapped, he made me, he called me, hugged me. It was great. Like, like, I felt like I knew him for like 12 years. Wow. So it went from silence for two and a half days to by the end of it, we might as well have been uh, tucked into a Walmart sleeping bag up on the side of Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> How big was your part in Outbreak? Um, about nine inches. I mean, ask Mary Ann. <laughs> she used me as a model. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, that's perfect and amazing. Apparently, this son didn't watch Saturday Night Live because I didn't get one. You didn't get it. You didn't get the point. You got to drink a bottle of pee to really get to get any oh notoriety here in this town. But I just remember. I mean, that is uh, that is where I fell in love with you. Then I think we did see each other two years later at Montreal, right, for the comedy festival, didn't we, or not? No. Next time we saw each other was we were at an audition in Hollywood for um, Charlotte's Web. Oh my God! With uh, Julia Roberts. Yeah. And that was enough because everyone was so intent. You got, you got to remember, you go to these Hollywood auditions, yeah. and guys are lining up their 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 years' income. They're lining up their next kind of big profile, Julia Roberts movie. So we were there, and I showed up in overalls, and then you were there, and and everyone was sitting there kind of tense, and me and you immediately just started goofing. Yeah. And then you go in, they take you in. I'll never forget this man, and I don't blame. I they sat. I sat down, and I was waiting. And one of the producers comes out. And all the other actors are sitting there on the couch in the waiting room. You're in there doing your thing. I think I'm up after you or something or in two more. And the producer in front of all of me goes, Harlan, thank you for coming in. We love you, man. We that, Don't worry. This is yours. This oh is God. yours. Yeah, Don't worry. You, thanks for coming in. This is just a formality. And all the other actors sitting there went. And then one of them got so pissed. He goes, hey, man. What the fuck did we come in for? And then, what, you, you're giving it to this guy? Like, one of the guys got, and I don't blame him. The fucking hillbilly. The hillbilly. The guy, the guy in the crawl space outfit. And, and then the producer got all like Hollywood. He was like, oh, no, man. What I meant to say was, and then it got awkward for me. Yeah. And, then, and then I went in and blew the audition. Oh. I was like weirded out. And half of me was like, oh, I feel horrible. And then the other half of me was like, it's like, I, I feel weird that, that he said that, of you know? It's way, it is way out of protocol. Yeah, because part of me was like, oh, well, if I'm already their guy, yeah. I don't have to do such a good reading. Right, right. So that was the second time we met. And then... Do you and, remember what the part was? Because I, I don't remember what I... I remember that going there and seeing you. I don't remember what I read for. I, I think there's a high probability since all of Charlotte's Web takes place on a farm. Pretty high chance a farmer guy. Yeah, I, yeah something like that. Uh, I don't think you're going to be a, a Russian ballerina. I don't think you're going to be a Wall Street lawyer. <laughs> Uh, nobody, nobody with a suit. It was a movie about a talking pig, a talking spider, and Julia Roberts on a farm. And a farmer. And what's his name? Is the is the farmer who did a wonderful job? Who the, the gentleman? Who was the gentleman? Who was the the guy in the overalls? You're thinking of Babe. I am thinking of Babe. The yeah. blue ox. Anyway, you're right. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, I yeah, but yeah, I didn't get that. Whatever, and you didn't either. Which is. That's so messed up that they or do you didn't? I didn't you, get it. You didn't. Get I didn't even get. I didn't even get a call back. But yeah. I, th I have a feeling because you know in Hollywood everyone's so central. It's like, 
we better not hire Harlan now just so we don't get blowback. From I can the, see yeah, that happening. Could, could be. You know, you know, I'll say this too, though. Please in the, say in the it. Room, if you did just hear that, so their response was, "I'm mad now because I've been brought in under false pretense." It doesn't yeah. matter. You're still brought in. Yeah. You, so guess what? They think they want the guy. Now you should double down in your head. That's and go, right. You know what? Uh, uh-uh, uh. I'm gonna act now. I'm free. Ooh. Now I'm free to go have my audition and just have practice at auditioning because we all need more practice at auditioning. But we all, we're, like you said, we're all so sensitive and keyed up going, this is my break and this yeah. I'm going to use this money that I don't ever have to have a second job and then I get a new car. All that shit that has nothing to do with the moment you're in, which yeah. means you have no possibility of ever getting it because you're not really here wow. doing your job. See, that's the fighter spirit in you that I wanted people to see on this <laughs> podcast. That was the reason you brought me on. It really was oh. because up until now you've been condescending. You've been kind of towering over me. Why with would your- I deign? to be have oh, such God. attitude one. But no, I'm serious. I, I like that fighting spirit because a lot that's probably why you're so successful because a lot of people don't go into that next gear. And I'm being serious that what you just said now, I loved hearing you say that because that that's part of what made you I can tell makes you be successful. Well I don't I well trust me, I don't always make that choice of like I'm gonna rise above it. Oh okay I'm, I'm, I'm you know Sometimes you can't, th- that choice is available to us. I have been at an audition where I saw a couple of big actors' names up for the same part. Yeah. And I do remember this. I remember I thought, why should I audition for this? Oh, right? okay. And then I saw two major actors' names on the list. What were they? What were the uh, names? I'm tell you. Why not? Just because, out of fairness, I just don't want it to. I would deign that you tell me. <laughs> I don't want to. Just okay, I'm going to throw them in there. The, I'll tell you why, because I got the part. That's why. It's so, done. Anyway, it's history, guys. I just remember seeing their names there, and I thought to myself, oh, fucking calm down, Keckner. These guys are going in and auditioning. Don't you get in your fucking head going, blah, 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 blah. oh, so you went to that next gear and got it, knowing oh. they were in the running. Oh, yeah. Wow, see, now even more I'm going well, back to no, what I just I said. Thought, I thought just, just knock down, get rid of your fucking ego. Yeah, because yeah. you always think like I'm bigger than this. They should just yeah, offer yeah, it to that's me. right. We, we all want it to be offered to us because yeah. our ego. Yeah, but I, these motherfuckers walked in and did it, and they had a bigger career than I did at the time. And I thought, okay, fucking. So wait, down. now I need to switch gears and get into the psychology. And you don't have to tell me their names, but it's interesting to me that you don't want to say their names, even well, though the ship has sailed. Okay, it's it was just it, out of respect because uh, I don't want to make it sound like oh I got the part. But what if a nosy, okay, was, okay. pushy host okay. was forcing you to, not right. forcing and you, they, but they really probably, prodding they, you? They probably don't care. It was George Went and Harry Shearer. You prick. How <laughs> dare you? What a snobby son of a, you know what? Get out. Get out. Get your fake son and your fake daughter, whoever's here with you, guy, I, I, and walk. I would if, if, if I knew this wasn't a fake Podcast, but I know it is a fake podcast, yeah. so it doesn't even. But there's probably a trap door. I'm going to go be swimming with the the catfish very soon. Oh God, I'm going to know. Oh, yeah. Oh yes, well, Sally the at the dildo factory. We have the poster for noodling. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, but anyway, yeah. I remember thinking I should just you know get it. Yeah. And then these guys are in there. They came in and auditioned. It was like, Did that push you harder, though, to, to really, like, did well, you go it, into a new gear, or were you, no, like, kind of, I'll just coast? No, it was like, calm down. Just go do your job. Huh. Go do your job and be grateful that you're getting hmm. the opportunity. It's not about your goddamn ego. Yeah. Just go, get the opportunity. There it is. So, in a way, <laughs> their presence put you into a headspace where you just kind of went, like you, you, you did switch gears to some degree. I think so. It sounded like you went in kind of like, I should be getting this. You saw their names and you went, okay, now let's yeah. compete. No, I did work really hard on the audition. Oh, good. I really did. I worked really hard on the audition. But yeah. You know, just because like I wanted it, you know. And yeah. It was, and so um, I knew what I was going to be doing. Yeah. But I think probably realizing that means I probably didn't go in like with any fucking attitude. Yeah. Or, you know, you know it's, it's when you're not grateful. 
Yeah, yeah. You, you got to be grateful. Great, you yeah. got to be grateful. We've talked yeah. about this yeah, before. Yeah. And yeah. by the way, just back to the the naming the actors, it, it's not disrespectful right. because it... Look, we're in a town where everybody's yeah, fighting yeah. for the same parts. And, and if anything, I bet the guys w- would watch this if they said they go, good for that guy. He yeah. got he beat yeah. me. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like sports. It's <laughs> like the best guy gets drafted yeah. for the team or for the part. And I, I find, I don't think I've ever had any sour grapes with anyone knowing that I saw them there and then they got the part. It's I like, I, I go, they were supposed to. Exactly. If, it, 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 there, there's, it's not like I took the part. Right. The producers saw exactly. what they liked. So please I, don't I, feel I, like I that. Always, I hope I, this yeah. helps calm yeah. you because when you lay in bed at night in your purple satin sheets and you have that hot oval team beside you and you're watching uh, yeah, Sally, I, I, Jesse, Raphael minute, on flat I've never, screen. I've never told you the color of my sheets. Nor so, have I told to the you words, my night, peeping I've never Tom ring a bell. told you peeping my Tom neighborhood watch. Ovaltine routine. I've not yeah. told you those things. How would you know that? I don't need to. I don't, I don't need I to be Sally told Jesse. when I take with my eyes. I watch through your window. I stand in the bushes. So I know about crazy. the birthmark I, on your inner thigh. I know uh-huh. someone has been watching me. You know they reveal these things like. Years later, they say that so-and-so was Hemingway. I read the other day, Hemingway was paranoid that the FBI was watching him. And then years later, when they did a release of information, indeed, the FBI was watching him. I wrote in my diary yesterday, which you probably already know that, I feel like someone's watching me. I feel like it's a Canadian. Wait a minute. Why would Mariel Hemingway be thinking the CIA was watching her? No, her grandfather. Who now? Archie. Um, we're on the uh, topic of auditions oh. here, gang. And what 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 was one of your worst auditions? Do you remember? Because there Oof. one that just stood out where you're like, oh, oh my god! Whether oh, it, oh, I know it. You got it. Yes. We got to hear it. Um, it was for Gary Shandling. Okay, yes. his show. What was the name of his show? It the, was the the last with the um, um, the Gary Shandling show. No, it was the um, was it the sitcom or the late night the late mockery? Night late, okay, yeah, yeah, that one. And uh, it's an episode where they're bringing in people, kind of like that Seinfeld episode where there's a there's a, a different iteration of them. Yeah. So I'm gonna play Jeffrey Tambor's part, right? Okay. And I only seen the show like once or twice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go in, and I'm supposed to do the hey now because I'm supposed to play <laughs> an alternative Jeffrey Tambor or something. Hey like. now is a lot like crawl, right? Yeah. So I just remember I'm doing the audition, and I mean getting nothing. Ooh, that was like, a lot like crawl. <laughs> it was like you just feel the room just going nothing. And Gary Shandling says, "Oh, he's there." Oh yeah. Oh. He goes, "Wow, that was amazing." I, you just kept going. He said it you like kept, condescending. No, no, no. Like, 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 like praising. Like, kind of like no, just speaking the truth of the moment. Like, okay. Wow, you just kept you. He said you were getting nothing, <laughs> but. You just kept going. You go, you know, you know you're not, you're not going to get it. But he I, said that, yeah, because yeah. no, no, I, it was just like, it was sweaty, nightmare, yeah, yeah, just like I had zero take on it. I guess that they wanted at all, oh. almost like, oh, this guy is he's brought a, a hammer to a basketball game, yeah, and he thinks he's going to build something. We're going to play a game. Yeah, I mean, just com- it huh? must have been just so completely. Not what they wanted. I just remember him staring at me, and he goes, "Wow." He was actually kind of he did appreciate that I just kept going. The effort, yeah. Right. He was right. in awe because a lot of people probably would have known when to stop, but you kept. And this is for real. This is a compliment. That's the cool thing about improv actors. Like you have a big, a strong background in yeah. improv. You keep going till you find it. Yeah. And in an audition, sometimes you don't have the, the runway yeah. to get off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. But you kept rolling down the runway, and he was probably like, wow. He, everyone in the room was probably, I would have stopped about 90 seconds ago. Uh-huh. I, 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 can, I commend that. that I, is, I don't, because I'm like, what, what are you going to do? Dude, you, you just know? got two free coupons for the <laughs> dildo factory. I'm, I commend that. With a stamp from Yeah. Tested by Caroline. So, so Which, you you yeah. uh, you hated it. You were well. I didn't hate it. I was. It was. It was know, your worst audition. Yeah, you're stunned. It hurts your soul a little bit. Yeah. You know. But the fact that he said, you know, kind of, he didn't go good for you. He didn't go way to go. Yeah. It was like, but I know that he was impressed 
that I kept going. Oh, so I'll take great. that like whatever, and then you're kind of you're bummed out. You're yeah, really bummed you're out because I mean I got nothing. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been to audition where I got, got nothing. nothing. You know, wow. At least like you know, like, and in front of a comedy legend like Shanley, that's that's uh. Yeah, that's that's the and brutality knowing, like, of showbiz. They will never have me in again, right? You know that. You know, like, oh no, no, not he got that guy. Are you no. saying that because he's dead? <laughs> Actually, yeah. A lot of people just found out. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Probably won't be going back in starting about nine years ago, guy. Uh, good <laughs> but no, morning. But, but you know what I'm saying? Just yeah. like you realize, like, oh, I'm sh- that door is shut to me forever. I mean, for yeah. whatever. Because he passed away. Of whatever he's doing, ever that he's in a producer, I was like, well, of course. Well, not he's him. passed away. Unless I think you he's, know, he's deceased. Yeah. yeah. In heaven, he still probably won't talk to me if there there isn't one. But I mean, if there was one, and for your in heaven, he's probably going. God, I hope that guy just keeps living and living and living, so he doesn't come up here and continue his monologue. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go talk to God and say, can you just put him in hell? I mean, I put him there for a minute. You should just wow. keep him there. Watch him in hell. What? Re- God, rewatch his audition with me. Because you know God has a, has a reel of all the auditions. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it a given you're going to hell for Corumpus, though? I think we know this. No, it's my only chance of going to, <clears throat> to heaven. All right, what's your worst audition? Oh, okay, okay. That's, that's Turning my... it around on the kid, okay. <laughs> the kid. Here's oh. my worst audition. <laughs> There was a show called My Name is Earl. Did yes. you ever do anything on that? It I was a did. sitcom on NBC. I know, I know. Uh, People thought, like, you're on that, right? <laughs> yeah. No, right. What, who was it? Jamie Lee Curtis was the lead guy? Was, um, uh, his name? Yeah. Bobby Lee? No. Something Lee? Yes. Jason Lee Jason Curtis. Lee, Jamie no, Lee Jason, Curtis's just, bastard just, son. Just, just, just Jason Lee, but yes. Jason from Friday yeah. the 13th, uh, the, Bruce uh, Lee <clears throat> Curtis. Uh, the Chipmunk movies. Yeah. But, um, so... <laughs> So I go in to, they're doing this thing and it was a successful primetime yeah, show. Yeah, I think yeah. it went like five seasons yeah. or something. Huge yes, show, but you don't know that when you're going in. So I go in down to, uh, down to Hollywood here to audition at, uh, I think it was the Radford studios okay. down in, uh, in studio city. And you know that it's a big intim- That's where they shot Seinfeld and everything. A lot so of great you, shows. Yeah, you got to go in through the gate, yep. and all the all the giant sound stages are in there. It's now intimidating. You're on the lot where there's a bunch of successful sitcoms yeah. being shot on that lot. Right. Yes. And then all these successful producers have their offices up in all the little bungalows. So it's an intimidating process just to go. So I go to read for the lead role of Earl. Oh, this is just the casting of it. This is the casting oh of it. Gosh. Well, audition. Right, right. That's what you said, oh, okay. right? I, no, I thought, yeah, yeah. I thought they uh, you were auditioning for uh, as a, as the show was going already. But no, this is for the original pilot. Auditioning, guy. You know, if we do, we need to stop. Do you need some pills or some lemonade? <laughs> some Newman's own. Do you need a dildo? Do you need quick, quick pop? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you're auditioning. For the pilot of My Name is Earl. I'm auditioning, yes. yes. Remember you asked me yes. what my worst audition yes. was? Or my worst podcast was? Uh, this will never air. It anyway. won't air. It won't air. Uh, so I go in for uh, My Name is Earl, and I go upstairs to this. You know, these producers have these kind of almost creepy bungalows where there's couches. It's probably where the term casting couch came oh, from because sure. there's couches and yeah, yeah. gross old shag carpet from the 70s. They, they smell a bit yeah. like Dolly Parton's cleavage. Yeah. <laughs> like just that kind of, it smells like relish and turnips and yes. poodle. Yeah, a lot of poodle. Um, and uh, so I go in and I've, by this time, I'm a little more seasoned. I've done a few sitcoms. I've right. done a bunch of movies. So I'm a little more seasoned and I'm like, I hate going into auditions and just reading cold. It's like, right. okay, Harlan, how are you reading for the role of Bob? Go ahead. I was like, blah, 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 blah. And and I, I'm out of my element. I need to, it's kind of like when we go on stage. You yeah. know, if you you kind of have to spin your own space. You, yeah. have to, you have to bring the people to your aura type of thing, right? Yep. So my gimmick was when I would go in, you always get the question. So I go in, it's, it's, a, it's the main producers, a man and a woman, just two of them. Maybe there was an assistant in there somewhere and a camera person. But they always start with, hey, how are you, Harland? 
and I'd always be, oh, I'm great. And then it would be go right into the reading. Right. And, and I've got no vibe. I've got no right. Harland energy, right? So my trick was people go, how are you, Harland? And I'd go, oh, not so good. And they go, oh, what's wrong? And I said, well, and this is how I got them into my world. I go, on the way over here, I, uh, I hit a dog. And they're like, oh, you hit a dog? And I go, yeah. And I go, yeah. And it bounced into a ditch. And they're like, oh, my God. And I said, yeah. Then it bounced up and it hit a little Korean boy on a bicycle. So I, I hit a dog and a, killed a dog and a boy on the way over. Now they're laughing. Okay. But I, I do it so slowly. and Like I play it so yeah. serious that I, I hook them. And now they're in the Harlan zone, right? And it worked like yeah. that. It made me feel good. It made me feel calm. It made me feel like I wasn't like on display. Right, I was right, like, right. I've at least brought them yeah. into my energy. You've already now. Had, you already had one win. Yeah, yeah. I, and I've set them up so now it's my headspace. So it worked all the time. I didn't always get the part, but at least it relaxed me and it right. put them in a fun headspace. So I go, I go, yeah, I, on the way over here, I hit a dog. And the woman immediately goes, oh, oh my God, you hit a dog? And it was so intense that I was like, all of a sudden I was like, holy fuck. And I'm like, and I go, I go, uh, yeah. She goes, oh my God, is it okay? And, and I go, well, I, th I think I just clipped it. I looked in the rear view mirror and I just clipped it. She goes, you mean you didn't stop? And she started crying. Tears started coming down her face. She goes, she goes, you didn't stop. And I go, I go, so now I'm like, now I'm like, I got to tell them, but she was crying. So I thought, oh. I got to keep the lie going. Oh. And I go, no, it rolled down to a ditch. I think it was okay. I didn't do the Korean boy part. And she's fucking emotional. And finally, I just had to go, hey, look, this is my method. I didn't hit a dog. But by the way, I never got the role of Earl. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was, it was, it was my worst it's pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm telling you, tears. And you're like, oh no. Oh yeah. And what am I gonna do? Plus, you're reading for the lead. The lead, which means potentially, I mean, houses. Oh, it's like, oh fuck. Oh, huge. If this works, network, NBC yeah. show. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. At stake. I lost probably <laughs> $500 million to a <sighs> stupid Korean kid <laughs> on a bike. Now, don't you think they probably had an offer out to Jason Lee? <sighs> I don't know. Do you think he read for the part? Because he, You he, know what? I'll say this. And no, here's going back, and the, not yeah. disrespecting, yeah. but Jason Lee wasn't like a big right, player right, at the time. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. And I think had I not been under emotional duress at that point, like... <sighs> My, no, I was just yeah, like, it, it was gone. The, the ship nothing. was sinking. It was like watching the Titanic yeah. audition for a swimming pool. You know, it was just like glug, glug, yeah. glug. Oh, God. And so I didn't stand it. She's still drying her fucking eyes, and I'm in the third soliloquy. <laughs> if, we, if my name is Earl, even had soliloquies. Oh, oh my God. So there it is. That's awesome. Um, we're coming to the end. Okay. You know, it's so funny because uh, I had a whole list of, you're going to have to come back. Okay. Because I was going to ask you about The Office. Yeah. We were going to talk about our relationship with Will Ferrell and all the movies we've done with him. Yeah. You, Anchorman, Superstar. Yeah. Um, we were going to talk about so many things, but it's so funny how Wag the Dog took almost the whole show, well, which is kind of cool. It was a big one for us. I mean, that, it was, was, that, a, that was the first movie. I mean, it, it was, was yeah. pretty wild. Well, it yeah. was memorable. And to do it with at that at that level, like not just... Not just um, De Niro and all the actors, but but, but Mamet, Mamet was considered Brandon the Levinson. the Mamet, writer the in fuck? Hollywood. Yeah. Levinson was top. Yeah. He had done Rain Man, and he was he, he was, was a list across yeah. the board, and yeah. and they threw us into it, which yeah. was an honor, and it was. But it was how we met, and it was yeah. uh, you know that that's where we can. You talk about twelve year friends. I was like, oh fuck, I I love this guy forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's interesting is we shot it at a weird studio. Right across, right nearby, in the, either the back of the studio or in front of it, was the Hollywood Cemetery. Yeah, it wasn't a place I think I've been to since. Yeah, so uh, it was a uh, yeah. weird, out of the way, like like soundstage. Yeah. And then you'd go out, and there was the, the, this very old cemetery with a lot of the stars in it. And I thought, I hope me and David end up here one day, <laughs> side by side. What if there's room? 
Let's go make room. Do you have a what? shovel? I do have a shovel. You know where I keep it? Are you planning to die soon? No. Do you know where I keep my shovel? Where? In the crawl. Oh, wow. Way to bring it around, Goldie Hawn. <laughs> wow. You should be deigned. Uh, we're going to end the show with a little feature that David uh, loves. I love it. It's called show. Words from a Wooden Shoe. And what happens is it's not word association. You, there's, there's words in here or little maybe tiny double words. You pull it out, and if it inspires a memory or a story you tell, and if it doesn't, you just go, we're done, podcast over. I'm going to dig deep in the Dig the into the shoe. Mouth. It's a size 11. That's an original Dutch clog. What is your word, David Keckner? The first time. Oh, well, I mean, you know, we all think the first time you had uh, 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 physical relations, right? Yeah, when, when, and where, guy? I don't. Have, my son's right here. Sure, he is. He sure, is, my son's is actually, he the result of that no, first time? No, he's not the result of the first time. <clears throat> I think your son needs to hear this story in order to no, carry on the legacy. Not, that's not a great story. I like the. It first could be the time. first time anything. I mean, look at it. We talked the whole show about the. This is a, probably the first time we met. And we got a ah, whole hour out of holy it. Holy shit. And Wait a minute. That's it. That's it. Throw it away. It was the whole, the whole. That was it. We reverse engineered this. was about the first time we met. Can't beat that. We're done. Wow. Yeah. Fuck yes. Great. That was pretty good. How'd that just pop? That's, that's, wow. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's very satisfying. That's what she said. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Harland Highway. My special guest, David Keckner. Please plug anything that you want to plug, um, Corky. Um, just uh, look on Instagram, just at David Keckner, K O E C H N E R. And I'm doing, I uh, think, uh, 19 more shows this year, all out of town, Great. all over the country. So it's all on your website? All on the website or on Instagram, Instagram. So check that out. Come see me. Yeah. Love me some David Keckner. We're going to have David back if he'll come crawl out of the crawl space, and we'll talk about some of these other great uh, stories. And, uh, buddy, love you. Thanks love for being too. here. And if, uh, if your son is here, um, <laughs> goodbye to him too.